Charles County 911, what's your emergency? I have a home invasion, my niece is tied up. I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. He said that it was because of his dad. I think we know exactly who did this. I don't honestly know what happened. When YouTube launched in 2005, the life of the average American teenager changed forever. Anyone could upload videos of themselves and gain notoriety. For Samantha Wolford, this dream never came to be. Rather than focusing on her brand, she set up an insane web of lies that would end in Take a trip with us as we discover the gruesome details of Ernie Ibarra Jr.'s death and how his wife would do anything to be famous. Samantha Nicole Wolford was born in the state of Texas on August 28, 1989. She was the oldest of three children and always longed to be a famous actress. Her family described her as someone with a lively personality and the potential to be a star. While in high school, she fell in love with a classmate and by the age of 19, gave birth to a set of twins. However, the love affair was short-lived and Samantha was left alone as a single mother of two infants. Struggling to make ends meet, her desire for fame was put on the back burner as she navigated her way through the hardships as a single mother with little income. In 2007, Samantha met a young man by the name of Ernest Lee Ibera Jr. Ernie was an introverted person, often described as shy and quiet. He had an interest in online gaming and his sister described him as an avid reader. She said he was kind of a bookworm. At one point, my mom had to ground him from his books because he would stay up all night reading books and go to sleep during class. His stepmother, Elaine, said he loved to mess around with computers, period. He could tear one apart, put it right back together. He was very, very good at it. He did go to college and get some certificates on technology and computers. Ernie was born on December 25, 1985 in Mount Pleasant, Texas, to his parents, Rhonda Atchley and Ernest Ibera Sr. He had a big family, which included his stepfather, Russell Floyd, stepmother, Elaine Ibera, plus his sister, Tiffany, and half-sister, Abigail. He graduated from high school in 2004 and took a few computer courses in college before landing a job at DBAT, a baseball manufacturing company running a laser machine that etches graphics onto baseball bats. His family was extremely proud of him for achieving this position. As a computer programmer, he writes, modifies, and tests codes and scripts that allow computer software and applications to function properly. They understand a variety of computer languages, including C++ and Java, and have the possibility to make over $80,000 a year in the right position. Ernie and Samantha first met on Facebook. They chatted for a while and eventually decided to meet in person. Samantha posted on her YouTube channel about the first time Ernie visited her, saying, My best day of my life to this point was I met my best friend on Facebook laughing and joking and all that good stuff and uh he decided to come and meet me that was really scary <laughs> i was terrified because i had never met this guy i we switched pictures and all that i mean he was basically family but we had never fa face to face met which scared the hell out of me because i don't meet people online i see all these stories about women meeting people online yeah i was freaking out he came and he visited and when he got there, we didn't know what to say to each other, so it was like this awkward smiling at each other. Samantha went on to say in the YouTube video that they hung out that night at a party, and she ended up going with him to give a friend a ride home. They flirted a lot, and she eventually introduced him to her kids. She claimed he was worried about everyone setting off fireworks around the kids during the 4th of July weekend, and seemed to be really caring towards her children. He later told her he wanted to adopt her twins because they didn't have a father's name on their birth certificates, and he wanted to be that person for them. With Ernie in her life, Samantha had the opportunity to focus on building her YouTube channel that she longed to become famous through. 
Everyone described them as an opposites attract situation where Ernie was the quiet, stable one in the relationship and Samantha was the outgoing attention seeker. Samantha created a YouTube channel under the name Simply Manic 6075 where she attempted to share her life with her followers and potentially gain interest as a professional YouTuber. Unfortunately, her content was not branded in a profitable way, and she often posted about a variety of random topics, sometimes touching on controversial issues. She had problems gaining over 100 views per video and was clearly unable to build her account in a professional manner. In one video on her channel, her mother described how she was obsessed with working on videos and often posted footage of family members without their consent. She described her as a spoiled girl with hundreds of beauty products and accessories. When asked what her name would have been if her mother hadn't named her Samantha, her mom said, uh, <laughs> We've had this argument. We've had this discussion. Samantha hates her name. Oh my god, mom, that's so plain. Really? Samantha? Nicole? How plain is that? In 2011, Samantha and Ernie had been together for four years when Samantha discovered that she was pregnant again with a second set of twins named Jareth and Kelly. The couple struggled to pay their bills and financially support four children, so Ernie got a second job at Little Caesars Pizza in town. The owner, Sandy Contreras, had known Ernie's family for a long time, and he knew he needed the extra income. She said in an interview, there were days that you could tell that he was just really, really tired. He would always tell me, but I've gotta buy diapers, or I've gotta buy groceries, so I can't give up, gotta keep pushing. Ernie continued to struggle, with Samantha providing little to keep the family's financial situation afloat. He increasingly became frustrated by Samantha's oversharing on the internet, including posting videos about the couple's troubled relationship. You got that f***ing iPad in your hands. Oh, where, 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 where? It also bothered him that she shared several videos of their children in an attempt to gain followers, including one where she was filming her daughter dancing in the passenger seat of the car while she was driving. Ernie's sister said, my brother didn't really care to be in her videos. He was more of a private person. The pair had a falling out and separated for a while to get some space. However, the break didn't last long, and on May 21st, 2013, Samantha posted online that she was pregnant again. No, I'm not exactly excited about this. I would have been on birth control. I've already ended up in the emergency room. My dad's not excited either. This was not planned at all. In another YouTube video, she goes into detail about her pregnancy, cravings, and even discusses some topics that you probably shouldn't share with the entire world. Her videos often had a NSFW vibe, and it made you feel like you were on a boring video chat. She said her doctor prescribed her medication that counteracted with her birth control, which is why she ended up pregnant in the first place. But the fact that she called Ernie the baby's dad instead of her boyfriend was extremely telling. Throughout her videos, she often discussed extreme events happening to her, like being injured at Walmart, having her house burned down, and totaling her car in an accident. However, we were unable to determine how severe these events were, since the only proof is what she said on her YouTube channel. She also began telling her sister-in-law that Ernie was physically harming her. Abigail claimed that once she saw a small bruise on Samantha, but that was it. Ernie said he'd never done more than throw a small cardboard box at her once. Because of this, Samantha called the police and Ernie was arrested and a protection order was placed against him. This one instance hurt Ernie severely because it was his first criminal charge and now the police viewed him as someone who would hurt his wife. However, by the end of 2013, their fifth child, Caden, was born. The following spring, the couple decided they should get married. They left their children with Samantha's sister and traveled to Hope, Arkansas to be wed. A year later, Samantha posted her final YouTube video, attempting to give parents tips on getting their children ready in the morning. A daily tip on maximizing your time and making things go smoother. If she had focused her time on creating engaging parenting content and remained consistent with it, she possibly could have built a proper following. However, Less than a year later, on February 20th, 2015, everything changed.
In the early morning, Titus County 911 dispatchers received a call from Samantha's aunt, Ginger Kesterson, reporting a home invasion. Titus County 911, what's your emergency? I have a home invasion. My niece is tied up. She's tied up. She is tied up and dead. She was at their home, attempting to untie Samantha when she made the call. Her mother, Rosie Wolford, later said in an interview that she initially received a phone call from Samantha while she was out at a karaoke bar with her daughter, Natasha. The pair were leaving the bar when Samantha called her frantically, telling her that someone had broken into their home and taken Ernie. Since her mother lived an hour away, she called her sister, Ginger, to go check on Samantha. Her mother said, it was muffled and not clear. I finally get to the point where I can hear her and at that point, I start hearing panic. Samantha claimed that she had used her nose to dial her mother's phone number as she attempted to get out of the restraints she had been tied up with. When the police arrived, she told them that the children were all asleep upstairs during the whole ordeal. My mother was the first number on my call list. I just used my face. And so instead of calling 911 for help, you called your mother? How do you press 911 with your face? As she walked through the home and told the police of the timeline of events, she claimed that three people had broken into her home wearing black ski masks, gloves, and dark clothing. Okay. And we heard a noise, and the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. Masks on, black shirts, black pants, every inch of skin was covered. Before she knew what was happening, she had been woken up and hogtied with a piece of her clothing and ribbon. At one point, she said the ribbon may have come from her drawer, but she wasn't sure. The men then proceeded to hit Ernie in the face multiple times with a weapon and drag him downstairs. Downstairs, because they had to hit him downstairs and they were separating us. I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. They asked Ernie how he could treat his wife so badly and supposedly used her to taunt him while they continued to beat him. Authorities were immediately suspicious. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of blood though for somebody that was pistol whipped. Although Samantha said the men told her they were taking Ernie because of something his dad did, the police didn't believe her. The lack of blood and her confusing description of what happened made them question her story entirely. Psychologist Dr. Katherine Coleman said, Samantha sees herself as an actress but I think that she exaggerates her own abilities and investigators really see right through her. In my opinion, Samantha was very much like a narcissist. Narcissism causes individuals to be extremely self-involved, often ignoring the needs of others around them. They completely disregard everyone else's feelings and do not understand how their behavior affects others. Narcissism is a spectrum, and one can fall on the high end, which is Narcissistic Personality Disorder, or NPD, or they may be on the lower end of the spectrum, only having a few narcissistic traits. Most narcissists are charming and charismatic. They hide their negative behaviors and surround themselves with people who feed their egos. They often build superficial relationships with others to reinforce their own idea of themselves. Samantha was always extremely vain and seemed to have enjoyed the attention she received from Ernie and her supposed followers. Samantha seems to have the main traits of narcissism, which are sense of entitlement, where narcissists often believe they are better than others and deserve special treatment, manipulative behavior, where narcissists try to please and impress you in order to control your behavior and actions, need for admiration, where narcissists demand and praise and exaggerate their accomplishments for recognition, lack of empathy, where narcissists are either unwilling or unable to relate to other people's negative emotions like sadness or anger. This also makes it difficult for them to take responsibility for their own behavior. And finally, arrogance, where narcissists become rude or abusive when they don't receive the treatment they believe they deserve. Since they believe they are superior, they act out against people whom they think are inferior to or less than them.
Samantha clearly showed all of these signs when she blatantly ignored Ernie's feelings about posting videos of him and his children. She was so desperate to be seen that she posted almost 100 videos of herself talking about everyday life and trying to be an influencer by promoting brands that she didn't even have any affiliation with. Eventually, she was brought down to the police department for further questioning, and Deputy Chris Durant continued to refute her story. She continued to say the crime had to have something to do with Ernie's father and his involvement with illegal substances. But the police disagreed. That's when Samantha's story changed. She began to mention a new theory that could have taken place, which was that she had gone to the hospital to visit her friend Sharla, who was having a baby, and had met her boyfriend at the hospital. She claimed she had a problem with telling her friends about her relationship issues, and while she was venting, Charlotte's boyfriend began saying that a man shouldn't treat a woman that way, and that you don't do those things to a person, so he was going to deal with the situation. Samantha didn't think that the man was serious, but when Deputy Durant asked her his name, she was quick to respond with, His name's John? John has his Facebook is Rebel, John Rebel. Police retrieved the hospital room number of Sharla Morris and left Samantha in the interrogation room while they went to find John. As she waited, she wrote in big letters across the whiteboard, Have you found my husband? And stared directly into the camera. As Deputy Durant arrived at the hospital, he noticed two men split up upon their arrival, and one of them looked similar to the person in question. His name was Jonathan Kyle Sanford. He had recently gotten out of jail for his cousin and had run-ins with the law before that as well. Jonathan was arrested and so was his friend, who turned out to be his brother-in-law, Antonio Jose Ponce. When the men were arrested, Jonathan immediately told officers that they committed the crime, but that Samantha was the true mastermind. He said they planned the whole thing out with Samantha the night before the incident, and she even let him borrow her car, a Chevy Equinox, to take her kids to Walmart for some food and to commit the crime. The police then obtained footage from the Walmart in question and found the video of the two men with Samantha's kids, plus another unidentified man. Jonathan admitted that the third man was Octavius Lamar Rimes from Pittsburgh, Texas. Jonathan confessed that the three men took Ernie to a remote area near the Lone Star Steel Mill in Camp County after beating him in his home. In the dark of the night, they pulled Ernie out of the car and forced him onto his knees, where Jose ended his life with a bullet to the back of the head. By 11.30 a.m. the same day that Ernie went missing, Jonathan took investigators out into the area where they brought him and it didn't take long for investigators to find his unclothed body near a stream. When police finally found Octavius and brought him in for questioning, he told them that Samantha mentioned she'd been trying to find someone to end Ernie's life for years. The police were able to obtain phone records from the night of the home invasion and discovered that Samantha had been texting them the entire time. During the initial search of the house, where Deputy Durant's body cam was taping the scene, Samantha asked if she could text her mother. Phone records showed that rather than text her mom, she sent a message to Octavius that said, Kill Day's phone, shut that down. Then, while she was listening to officers' radio, they mentioned that Ernie's phone pinged near Pittsburgh. Her cell phone pinged 0.86 miles from a resident in Pittsburgh. When asked if she knew anyone in Pittsburgh, she shook her head no, but moments later, she picked up her phone and texted Octavius the message, ditch the phone, move. On October 23rd, 2015, Samantha was arrested for the aggravated killing and murder of her husband. All three men involved were charged with the same crimes, and both Jonathan and Jose pled guilty to the charges, receiving 50 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice Prison for each offense. Octavius decided to stand trial in Titus County for the aggravated kidnapping charge and was sentenced to 23 years. Then he was convicted of murder in Camp County and sentenced to 75 years, which he had to serve after the first 23. Samantha then stood trial for the aggravated of Ernie and received a sentence of 50 years, 
In her testimony, she claimed she was prescribed Ambien due to her sleeping problems and didn't remember any of the events that fateful night, including sending the text messages. On September 11th, 2017, she stood trial once again. However, this time it was for Ernie's Only three days later, she was found guilty by the jury and received 99 years in prison, which she is to serve after the first 50. Samantha attempted to appeal her convictions twice with no success. Both times, Samantha tried to say that the jury was not told that Jonathan and a woman named Whitney Smith were jailhouse witnesses. In the first appeal, documents said that the trial court's error in not stating Jonathan was a jailhouse witness or accomplice witness was harmless, and the court continued to agree with the jury's original convictions. Similarly, in the second appeal, the court felt that because Samantha's comments about the text messages to Whitney could have happened outside of jail, it was determined that she did not need to be labeled as a jailhouse witness either. During the trial, Jonathan claimed that they initially planned to place illegal substances in Ernie's car and have him arrested on those charges. When Jonathan and Jose asked Samantha if she was okay with the plan changing to she asked them if they were serious. Jonathan replied, all she had to do was leave the front door unlocked. We know she intentionally left the door unlocked for the men which led the jury to convict her. To make matters even crazier, Samantha's Aunt Ginger, who originally found her bound and struggling to free herself, had a boyfriend named Brett Webster, who testified that he was originally watching the children the night of the event. But the following day, Samantha texted him and said, Jonathan would be picking up the children in her car, which he did. Samantha told numerous people in her life that she wanted to get rid of her husband at any cost. We know that Ernie loved his children dearly and would not let Samantha take them away from him. So she probably felt like this was her only choice. It is also apparent that she wanted the notoriety of being the poor wife of a slain father of five. In her eyes, his death would put all eyes on her and she would finally receive the fame she always wanted. Ernie is buried at Omaha Cemetery in Omaha, Morris County, Texas. His funeral was a beautiful gathering of his dearest friends and family. They all said he took pleasure in being useful, helping others, and gave without expectation of return. Overall, it seemed like Ernie was truly a good person who wanted to provide for his children and live a private life. But Samantha wouldn't allow that. Their children are being raised by Samantha's mother, and we hope they continue to visit Ernie's family. Although Samantha is stuck behind bars forever, she is still trying to find love. On the website jailbabes.com, she has a profile with images of her and a biography section that states, There is never a dull moment with me. I'm a caffeine-addicted Mormon who loves to laugh and enjoy life to the fullest. I love to meet new people. It's always quite interesting getting to know people from all walks of life, so never think we'll be ill-matched. I work hard so I can play harder. Write me so we can play together. You won't be disappointed. The full description is completely creepy and begs the question, who writes into convicted criminals who have a hand at their own husband's death? Also, she stated that her previous occupation before going to prison was a business manager. Other than venting to strangers on the internet, she didn't seem to hold any type of management position we are aware of. Eerily enough, she also still has her YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts online. Although you cannot comment on the YouTube channel, the other profiles allow commenters to say whatever they want. It's an interesting concept in today's day and age where everything is documented on social media. What is the most ethical way to deal with these types of profiles? Should the companies delete the accounts or does that impose on their freedom of speech? Either way, it's strange to watch several videos of a girl who constantly complains about her relationship and issues she has in her life, knowing that she did nothing to change her circumstances other than set her husband up to lose his own life. When the crime initially took place, her videos had less than 100 views, as mentioned by several news outlets. Now she has over 2,500 subscribers, and most of her videos have been viewed over a thousand times with her final video at almost 80,000 views. So what do you guys think about this case? Do you think Samantha found the fame she always wanted? 
Do you believe any of Samantha's accusations about Ernie's harmful actions? And why do you think Jonathan and Jose changed their minds about Ernie and decided to take his life rather than just set him up? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And don't forget to click the notification bell, like the video, and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.